Hi guys and welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Industrial Chemistry topic. This is video number 15 in this particular series and we're going to move on from our comparison of electrolytic and galvanic cells to a focus on the electrolysis of sodium chloride solution. The goal for this industrial process is to produce sodium hydroxide, a very important uh, and very common and strong uh, basic solution. So what we want to do is work out how we produce this solution um, from the electrolysis of concentrated sodium chloride solutions. Now this is going to uh, happen in one of uh, two main ways, and we'll look at both of those in this video. Um, and most of the consequences are a result of the concentration of the solution and also the um, actual voltages that are applied. And the source of the NaCl comes from uh, seawater, or sometimes also the salt mines. Now we have, you have looked at in one of your assignments uh, on the solvay process, uh, brine as a very important raw material um, for that solvay process. And we know that a highly concentrated salt solution is known as brine. And this is one of the important, in fact, the primary raw material that's used for the production of sodium hydroxide. The chloride ions in this particular case are oxidized at the anode, so this is an ox, and they form chlorine gas. Now, chlorine gas has some environmental implications and you need to keep that in mind when we're doing our analysis later on. But because it is almost always produced by these various processes, um, it kind of cancels itself out because it's always a problem. Um, sodium ions, uh, the other things we want for them to be um, reduced to form sodium metal, but the problem with that is that sodium ions are too stable. Okay, it, uh, The sodium metal itself is extremely reactive and therefore it preferentially um, exists as sodium ions. And as a consequence of that, uh, and as a consequence of that, uh, most often when we're looking at electrolysis, we're looking at the reduction of water to hydroxide ions and hydrogen gas. So this is the equation for the red cat. So reduction which occurs at the cathode. This is the equation right here, water um, gaining electrons in order to form hydrogen gas and our uh, hydroxide ions. What this means is that the sodium ions remain in the solution. They are the spectator ions, and as a result, um, we don't tend to include them when we're writing ionic equations. They remain in the solution at the beginning and the end, but they will be part of our full formula equation. So you can see in the net ionic equation, our two starting species are uh, water and chloride ions, and our products are chlorine gas, hydrogen gas, and our hydroxide ions. Of course, this means with um, these species being as they are, we need to think about our electrodes because none of these species are solids and therefore none of them can be used as electrodes. So we have to, um, that's why we have a consideration of what we're going to use for our electrodes to conduct the electricity. When we write the full formula equation, here's the um, sodium chloride, which has come from the brine and of course the water. And then we have our two gases and our desired product which is our sodium hydroxide in solution. Now it is possible to produce sodium hydroxide from molten sodium chloride. Now the difference with this of course is that um, when we use molten sodium chloride the only things we have available to us are sodium ions and chloride ions. Now as a consequence of this uh, when we are electrolyzing molten sodium chloride, the only things we can do is to reduce the sodium into sodium metal and to um, oxidize the chlorine into chlorine gas. And then we just balance those up. And that gives us, so this is the um, reduction and this is the oxidation. And as a consequence of this, we get this as our uh, net equation. Notice this time the water doesn't appear, and obviously in order to form our sodium hydroxide, we would have to react the sodium um, with water in order to form hydrogen gas and sodium hydroxide. So then just a quick comparison uh, of each of these two. 
Um, when we're looking at the electrolysis of brine, then at the anode we have chlorine forming, chlorine gas forming, and likewise when we're looking at molten sodium chloride we also have chlorine gas forming. The difference of course is what's going on at the cathode, and at the cathode, um, equation sort of a little bit difficult to read here, but you can see that what's happening is it's actually water that is being reduced to form the hydroxide ions and hydrogen gas which would be given off, but at the in the uh, molten sodium chloride, then we have sodium ions and uh, sodium metal that's actually being uh, produced. Also, um, there would be a lower voltage, a lower potential difference required to produce, uh, to reduce the water than there is for the sodium. So this would also require a higher voltage. Thanks for watching.